Rocky fans, here the game. Do some of the other call, woof, 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 woof. That's a little chihuahua, as you know, what love the sound of its bark. Typical, eh? That's what I'm speaking. I figured the other day when I was talking about aliens, one of my old time favourites, one of my old time classics, why not this one? I reviewed it before, it's one of my favourites, I like it, I love it. Now, sock or off? Sock or off? What do you mean by sock or off? It's not one of my favourites of Arnold Schwarzenegger's. People are say, you don't like this film? Like it's the fucking only of the sins. But I don't, I don't. But I respect it and I still think it's a good one. If I've got to choose one of my favourite of Arnold Schwarzenegger's, I'd go with the original, the Sapphire Predator. Or I'd go with Toko Retail. I do love the running man as well, but Toko Retail is a fun ride. The last film had the beautiful Golden 18. Fuck the remake, with every fibre in its bone, you've heard me shoot that loads of times. Or oh, my other favourite would be Predator. But it doesn't mean that there's not been an Arnie film I like. Arnie in his heyday, when he was in his dirty thirties, to me, was a highlight. He was a highlight, and it's just his biceps, his witty one-liners, to me, is brilliant. But I respect the film. I respect it for a lot of reasons. I respect it because it was the first time you saw Arnold Schwarzenegger play a bad guy. I respect it, the fact it was a slasher, it was an horror movie, and it was science fiction all rolled into one. If anyone wants to know what I've been on about for half an hour, I'm on about the original, the tacit, the exterminator. That's right, the exterminator. Now, the exterminator was inspired by two things. One, it was inspired by a tacit sci-fi film as well, being Westworld. I love Westworld. And it was also inspired by an episode of The Outer Limits. There was an old episode, right? There was an old episode of The Outer Limits where there was this robot sent into what would have been the modern times from the future. So there was this soul sort sent to destroy it. Very similar. So that's what inspired this. And James Damnin, you know, he made it big with, before, this was before he did Aliens. He decided to go one eye off. So you know, he worked with Bernanus too, we all make mistakes. But, you know, he's not the brain, he got the sack. And there's always been days where his dad tried to sabotage that film to make his own, but never got the success he wanted. But he got the looks of working on the set on du -du -du -du, Charity of Terror. You want to know the rest, it's going to be aliens with him. So now he wants to go bid on and inspire the game by Westworld and the Outer Limits, he decided to do his own version of it, being the Exterminator. And the rest is this to that. Now, I do know he's going to have old Dave Simpson play the Exterminator. Me, what in hell? And it's funny, it is. It's a very, very funny story, because old Dave Simpson, he thought, was too friendly, seemed too passive, uh, to play this psychotic android sent to kill a woman. Which is quite funny, really, because when you think about it, old Dave Simpson was the Exterminator in real life when it comes to his wife. But that's a different debate. Um but the end of the day the end of the day they looked and they looked and decided to go with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was still making movies, not that big, you know what I mean? He made it big with Job the Barbarian, saying they did Job the Destroyer, you know, even though he's doing warrior films, then he excuse to show his biceps. So I only wanted to get his teeth in this, and I do know originally he was going to do some Beans Low, he was going to be um, John Donner. But Arnold Schwarzenegger read the step of the one that was going to be the Exterminator. He wanted it, he wanted it so much, he even begged James Jamney, could he play that role, and the rest is history, he got the role he wanted. And I like it. I do know that Arnie really he felt a bit uncomfortable saying the line, I'll be back, which everybody knows is iconic, because of his, his speech. You know, his accent. And I do know James Jamlin was being a bit of a dick there with him and saying, no, you do it, but that's James Jamlin for you. I always said what I think of James Jamlin. I do know he's a dick in real life to work with. You know, he's got to look at loads and loads of bios of this. How he treated the, the Tass in the Abyss. How he treated Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Exterminator. How he treated people when he was doing Aliens. Believe me, the list goes on. He's a dick to work with. But as a director, I also respect him. Because he has made some damn, damn good films. This being one of them. 
So he did feel uncomfortable doing that. Same as doing the new team and the opening. But he too did it like a trooper and got on with it. So it starts off, it shows the suits, uh, it shows all these machines and laser guns flying out everywhere. It does a monologue of what's going to happen. You get the G8 music. Do do do. Do 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 do. Do do do. Do do do. do. I'm going to do the rest. I'll kill it. I'll exterminate it. But then you got Arnie, like I say, he comes down, he's in the nut, you've got these people making fun of him, and he says that line, he goes, different to me, now. One, they all told him to fuck off, and pull fitness at him, well actually say fuck you asshole. But look a bit with Arnie, he just rams his hands and his dies chest, rips his fucking heart out, no fucking about, kills him. And that's what I mean, that's what I mean, this is to me, it's like a roller and a slasher rolled into one. Really is. I love the dark atmosphere, the blurriness in it. I love everything about the Exterminator. That's why I'm not. It's not one of my favourite Arnie films, but I do think it's a good film for that. You do get a Bill Patterson in that scene. He plays one of the punks. He's the one that says, "Fuck you, asshole." That's him. Then you get Sean Beam, which is a Doors inspired James Cameron in the Doors to pay from the Bay of the Soul to the Aliens two years after, and he gets the role of John Connor. Got Linda Amberton, this was not long after she did Children of the Todd, before she did the series Beauty and the Priest, and so on. As Sarah Connor. And it's a bird, I mean she's not she's not a raving beauty, she's not a set symbol, but she's natural. She's natural pretty. She's not a fucking tango in distress. She holds her own nearly at the end. So you've got the exterminator. When I first saw this, I thought it was about a serial killer murdering women go Sarah Connor, but there's more to it than that. I mean, he knocks on the door, he says that line, Sarah Donner, she makes me start saying yes, he bars it in, <laughs> fucking shoots her down, and basically he's killing all these women, go Sarah Donner. Now you've got this one dude, looks a bit like someone out of a fucking porno, you Sarah Donner's mate. I was like, I thought it was funny that she's got headphones on, it's like a song, it's a machine, it's a machine, and she's she's getting bonked. You hear the same fucking thing, it's like, you can't even bonk with no headphones. So, the scene he barges in, he kills the boyfriend, he literally fucking batters him to death, he shoots this poor woman that he mistakes as being Sarah Tonner. <laughs> Massacre saw, to find a tape recording of the real Sarah Tonner. Because all the way through the film, you think she thinks on Beam's character, who's John Tonner, he's going to kill her, he's going to murder her, he's following her about, that's not the case. So he goes in that night club, which funny enough is called Exterminator, shoots everybody to get Sarah Tonner. Sean Beam, Sean Tonner gets the better of him and shoots him through a window. And that's the bit where if you first seen this film, the very first time, you think, whoa, what the fuck's going on? And he's getting up, he's just got shot the fuck. That's when you find out at all, he's a sideboard. And I look behind what Sean Beam says, he breathes, he smells, you can't reason with him, you can't breathe with him. He doesn't show no mercy, not until you are dead. Come with me if you want to live. And I love that, I just love it, because it's true, there's no mercy, you can't breathe with him, you can't offer him dogs, you can't fucking bed him, you can't reason with him, he doesn't give a fuck, he's an android, he's been programmed as a fucking killing machine. He doesn't give a fuck. And what else I love about the exterminator, the human in this went with it, I didn't go with the human in the third one. Talk to the fucking hand, fuck the hand. Fucking the song is bad, do, 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 bad. I didn't go with all that fucking silly humour. In this, the humour rent of the film, like the scene where his face is rotting and somebody knocks on the door. You got a dead dog in there and he's looking up the words and he's got that line, fuck you, asshole. That rent, that rent with that film. Like I say, he's protecting Sarah Tonner and you find out she's a muffler. We all know that's doom nature, we know the story. She's just going to be a mother of the one that ends the war. So that's why they sent this android to kill anyone called Sarah Tonoff. It's not just some guy just killing for the fucking fun of it. He's an, it's not even that really, he's an android. You mean he looks human, he's got human steam, he can bleed. Yeah, there's some effects now, like the bit where he pulls his eye out and his face is like that. You can see it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which I do believe Arnold Schwarzenegger ordered that pop up. So he, he couldn't play the movie, he actually holded it up when he put on the sun tassies and everything. But you know, for his time, he didn't bother me, I'd use that over CGR any fucking day of the week. 
I mean, I like the stock most soon and in the futuristic world. I love everything about the exterminator. And then he says that line, they're shooting the peace officers up. I'm a friend. Can I come and see you? No, just making a statement. I be back. <laughs> I just love it. He ran to Karin, he's done so no mercy, he's shooting everybody. Because again, he's an android. To the Bayani being a bad guy. Not really, because when you think about it, he was a sideboard. He was Paul Tam to do that. Like your TV is Paul Tam to put on whatever shit you want to watch on a computer. It's Paul Tam to do whatever you want it to do. Or, you know what I mean? Whatever. That's what he was. He was a fucking computer. Made it look like a human. Paul Tam as a killing machine. He was not going to have no mercy. Not going to give a fuck. Don't give a shit. So I want each one of them to really a bad guy. I want it. Not really, because... He was a sideboard, he was pulled down to do that. He was killing me scene. So I do love the bit where he's chasing him, he's in the fucking truck. Tron Tronner gets the better, he falls that fucking anti You think he's a Tron up, and then that's when you see the metal one. Bit of stop motion, a bit of pat for cool. And I like that, I like the bit where he's following him about, he's got this cheapy music. Did, 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 did. And then he started a fight with the sideboard, it gets the better of. Tom Bean, but he falls on anti -nide. He self sacrifices himself, which is pretty sad. But you knew, you knew his fate. You knew Tom Bean's fate was not going to be a dud. I do know there's a bonky scene in it. But even that has a story. That has a story. Do you know nowadays on Facebook, some people make fun of the scene with Sarah Tronners and fucking Tom Bean riding him? Come on. Is that all you can do nowadays on Facebook? But. Even that has a story to it. It's not to say it's just so tits and new to that. That has a story because you turn, you find out John John is going to be, he's the father of her son who would later be called Tom John. You know what I mean? So he became the father of the one that ends the war. So I don't like that little touch to it. And also, like I say, Dean Damerton sees his body, the robot's still alive, it's chasing her. He's got her in this bin, so Sam's just laid down, says that line, he yeah, exterminated, fucker. She presses the button, trusses it, kills it. Now I do know there's a few deleted scenes, and there was one I misdetected in the film where you've got the guy that works the facts there, and he finds a mic of tip, but sort of foils on for that. There's also another bit where Sean Beam actually breaks out into tears, as John John is flying and everything. And she told him to snap out of it. And they was going to destroy the facts of what made it, what caused all this. Sad to say, those two, a few scenes were deleted. There's a bit more where Arnie shoots the woman and he walks away. There was a thought it was a bit cold blooded, so they, they deleted that. Even though on TV they did sim some of the fights down a bit. Um, there's quite a few other deleted scenes here and there. It's a different tape. But there's a few I thought I miss, I fucking miss, the tape in the film. But like I say, it ends. I love the bit. Where she's diving off in the desert, and you get that music again. De -de 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 -de. I love it. I just love the exterminator. It's like I said, without repeating myself, it's an horror movie. It's an action movie. It's a sci-fi movie. So fuck it. Eight star rating for me because they don't make films like this anymore. And as Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back to do some more movies and more movie reviews.